Uh, well, the stock sanded, now it's time to work on the metal part. So I'm going to work from the back to the front. So I'll be starting with, with the butt plate. And as I showed you, I, I rough polished this while I was sanding the stock because this pretty much has to remain in place on the stock when you sand it. So now I'm going to give it the final polish. Uh, I'm not going to use sandpaper. I'm going to use this emery cloth. And uh, I like to use this product. This is by Wood River. It's a Turner's Turner sanding pack. It's got 150 grit, 240 grit, 320, 400, and 600 grit uh, emery cloth, and that is as much as we'll need. So, <clears throat> even though I already did uh, 150 grit paper, I'm still going to do 150 grit emery cloth, and I'm just going to go over the whole thing, get out any scratches, and I'm just going to work my way through every uh, every piece on here until we've got a good finish. I'm going to it off now by buffing it out with some 4-0 steel wool. And uh, do a bit of this. But it's basically done. And just to give you an idea what it was, the trigger guard is not polished. And I believe you can see the difference. And, and this was actually considerably rougher than this one when we first started. So eventually this has got to get to the same place. But the next thing I'm going to be doing is the toe plate. And I've mounted that on this piece of wood because this is flat and of course I want it to stay flat when I'm done working on it. Now you'll also notice probably I've got these Phillips head screws in here. Ordinarily if I was making a gun from scratch or you know from a component type kit I would order two sets of screws and you know typically you use one set of screws during the build and they're going to get scratched up and hacked up and then when everything is done you put the uh, the good set on that's what you finish and brown and do all that stuff well of course Lyman does not send you two sets of screws and rather than trying to match the diameter and pitch of the screws that they sent me I'm just using some screws out of the shop for this and you know everything on the gun I'm using the original screws which I'll probably have to polish back out and fix but uh, because this got the full 220 treatment while I was sanding the stock I'm going to go right to the 320 grit emery cloth to work on this so this one's going to go pretty fast and it's quite easy because it's flat and I just got to knock it into shape and uh, when this is done then the next piece will be the trigger guard and of course this will actually be a lot of work because we're starting from scratch I should say if you don't like doing the work um, don't bother getting the kit with the idea that well I can't afford to get the finished gun um, I mean, look around, you can probably find the finished gun for only 50 bucks, maybe 100 bucks more than the kit. And you will put many, many hours into finishing this kit to do it right. So if you don't like doing the work, it actually makes a heck of a lot more sense to go work some overtime and buy the finished gun. Uh, because this is a lot of work and it's got to be kind of a labor of love. I mean, you got to enjoy building them. And if you do, then this is absolutely the way to go. And I do. Okay, so butt plate's done. Toe plate's done. And now it's time to move on to the trigger guard. And, and I've got to admit, this is about my least favorite uh, polishing chore in gun building and this one's going to be particularly annoying because I can't even use my usual jigs uh, for holding it because it doesn't attach with pinning tabs like the ones I'm used to it attaches to the stock with screws so I don't have a jig that'll hold it for doing the inside work so I'm just gonna have to get going I'm gonna basically be using all of these files 
to get into the various nooks and crannies and get it filed out before I polish it. So I'm going to start doing the inside bow of the trigger guard. And I just got to take off all of the scale here from casting. Which, I mean, I've seen a lot worse. But it's going to be some work. I said to get into every nook and cranny of this thing. But that's what it takes, so that's what we're going to do. So I'll just keep, uh, I guess you can't see where I'm working, right? Let me back this up a bit. Okay, so I'm working the, the file inside the bow. I'm using a, uh, a half round file, metal file. And I'm just taking off the casting line here and getting that scale knocked off. And then I'll be able to start rough sanding it. And we got a while to go on this. Like I said, you got a lot of nooks and crannies that have got to be shaped on this. So you got to use a lot of different uh, file shapes to, to get into them. using a triangular file here to get to get this area done. And I just gotta keep moving down the line. Alright once I get into areas like this I'm using Swiss needle files. Let me flip this over a little bit. Let's see if I can get on camera here. Oop. All right. So I'm using Swiss needle files. I've already broken one off in here just because you put so much pressure on them. Uh, and believe me, that hurts because I use very expensive European Swiss needle files for work like this. Uh, but they cost a lot. But Compared to the Chinese files, these things really work. So they're absolutely worth the money, but you don't like breaking them, that's for sure. But this is what it takes to get into a tight curl like this. this is, uh, it really takes you know, a very fine, very sharp file. And that's exactly what this is. Well, we've got the inside of the trigger guard all polished up now. And we got to do the same thing to the outside. So, once again, just going to get busy filing off the scale here. And we'll get out any of the any pits we find like I don't know. We'll see how well you can see it. But there's, there is a pretty good pit right there. That's going to have to be filed out. So, got some work. Filing and then polishing. Well, we've got the trigger guard all polished up now. Ready to brown so we can put it aside. And uh, the next thing we're going to do are these four little escutcheon plates and these are what the wedges go through to hold the barrel on and they'll be pretty easy because we've already taken them down to uh, the 220 grit level when I was sanding the stock so we just have to go 320, 400 and 600 on these and then they'll be done so because these are flat I'm going to handle them the same way that I handled the toe plate so I've got them screwed down to this chunk of wood and uh, I've got my 320 grit emery cloth on a block and I'm just going to go right over them and keep everything nice and flat and just polish them up. And we'll just work our way down through the grits until they're done. Well, I've got all the wedge escutcheons polished up and I've bagged them up along with the little tiny screws that hold them in so I don't lose anything. I'm just going to put these aside. Now we've only got two more pieces of 
steel to polish on the stock. Uh, and I'm going to take care of all the stuff on the stock before I get to the major iron, which is the barrel and the under rib. So we've got the entry thimble and we've got the, uh, the nose cap. And they're both pinned in place with, uh, with pins that go through the stock, if you can see. Now, thimbles are typically pinned in place, so that's expected. This is going to be the first nose cap I've ever seen pinned in place. I just secured this in the vise to make it a little bit easier to work with. It doesn't need to be in very tight. I just need to get these pins started. And then I'll pull them out. That one's a little bit harder in there. Okay. Alright, got them started. Pull this out of the stock. See they're sticking through, so I'm going to grab a pair of pliers. And... Pull them out. That one's a little bit tough. A little bit tough. Let's see. Oh, well, it's a little bit bunged up. I may need a new one. So, let's see. This should come right off. Beautiful. So, we'll get that off. And now we're going to lift this up. Alright. Now, that's a little bit. That is unexpected. Uh, I'm going to turn off the camera for a second and get something. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, this is one of the rods that I took out, one of the pins. And as you can see, I've stuck it onto masking tape. And that's how I'm going to keep track of them and keep from losing them. I assume that this was just one sixteenth inch thick drill rod. So I went to my stock stock cupboard and pulled out some 1 16th drill rod and cut a piece off. And as it turns out, it is not. It must be some wacky metric size. So I'm going to save those pins. I don't want anything to happen to them. But if I had to do anything to replace them, I would replace them with 1 16th inch drill rod and I would just re-drill these holes. Uh, in fact, the stock holes will probably fit. They'll fit in here. I just redrill these holes to 1 16th of an inch and use this. But if I don't have to do that, I'm not going to because I'm inherently lazy. All right, so that's, that's the story on that. Now, what I wanted to show you, this was unexpected. This is the entry thimble. And, of course, you know, this is the way it looks sitting in the stock. All right, you just see the tail and this. I thought it was a normal entry thimble. It is not. This thing is massive. Just to show you, I'm working on another rifle, a traditional rifle. And this is a typical entry thimble. This one's brass. But you get the idea. It's got a, a tail. It's either cast or sheet, usually. And then the thimble body itself. All right, this has what looks like a tail, but it's actually just a massive cast thimble body. And uh, that was kind of a surprise. And you can see it's got a huge mortise in the stock. Now obviously the reason that they did this is so that they could cut this this you know basically rectangular mortise into the stock that would uh, allow them to machine make this very easily without having to do the sort of fitting that you would do on a normal one. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. You know, it's, I mean, it's good and solid for sure, and the stock seems to have plenty of wood on it to, to maintain its strength. So, so it's okay. I just never saw anything like this. I certainly did not expect this thimble to look like this when it came out. But all we've got to do is polish the visible areas on it, and that's not so bad. So we're going to get to work on that right now. And I'm working on the entry thimble. There's a little little lip here. And the only way to really get that cleaned out is to use a Swiss needle file and get in there and do it. Now, I filed over this whole top of the thimble and it was pretty rough. And now I'm polishing it out. And one of the things that you notice sometimes as you're polishing and I'm still on very rough, rough paper. 
is that you can't always see all of the pits and dings until you get a polish somewhat. And that's the case right here. I've got I've got a couple of pits here that are going to have to be filed out. Now, I'm using my Swiss needle files here. I gotta go back to square one. Now sometimes you won't find that until you're on the you know the really finer grades of, of sandpaper, in which case you have to go all the way back to the coarse grades and start over again. Luckily I'm still on 60 grit paper. Now one of the other tricks I do is I cover the back of the paper with duct tape. And uh, on this coarse paper that makes it last uh, about as well is emery cloth. So if you have to go back and start all the way off again, well just just figure that God's testing you and uh, take it as a challenge to go back and do it. But you really have to get all of those pits out. So now I gotta polish all this this out again right here. And then I can move on to the finer grits and get this thing done. This great big bulky thimble is actually kind of handy because it holds in a file much better than a normal thimble, which usually I'd be doing it right from the tail here. So, uh, and it holds in a vise better. So, anyway, just got to get all those pits out and then work your way down. Oh, the nose cap, it's really hard to hold in a vise. Um, so, I'm doing this by hand which is not the greatest way. I've already filed it. Right now I'm using 60 grit paper like this backed uh, with duct tape. And I'm, I'm using a sanding block for this because I need to maintain these sharp edges here. And if I sanded it by hand they would round over. So uh, all of this is, uh, is being done with the blocks. So, got it roughed out, and now I just have to keep going through the grades of sandpaper, and then this will be done, and we can move on to the, uh, the last step. Well, with everything polished out, the next step is going to be to brown the metal, and that'll be the subject of the next update.